This college basketball picks edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by SGPN's ultimate New Year's Eve party. Hop on our YouTube channel for a truly DGN afternoon, complete with picks, prizes, live sweats, and more. The fun starts at 12:30 Pacific New Year's Eve. Let it ride, brother. This is Jerry Glanville, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. <laughs> Gonna need a pack or two in Vegas to catch up to that voice. Yes, got a raspy Grrr. ass, raspy ass voice. Uh, Vegas voice, even pre-Vegas. We are back in Vegas for our Vison show Friday, at nine o'clock Pacific, midnight East. If you're wondering, hey, what's going on? Where's Colby? Colby joining us via remote. Uh, Colby has a restraining order against a uh, college football bowl game, so we we could he could not be this close to God's eye ride with all with the bowl bonanza going on. Joining us via remote, the host of the college basketball experience, Mr. Colby Dan. What's up, Colby? Well, I mean, I, I I do like these bowl games in baseball stadiums. There's a couple that are okay. One of them's going on right now, so I found it very rude of you guys to ask me to do this show in the middle of uh, Fenway Park football. Yes, but uh, ba- uh, football is happening at a baseball stadium right now. But we're bearing the lead. Look at my new Syracuse uh, basketball <laughs> jersey. Look Woo! at this thing. This is amazing. Wow, it's Buddy right. What's the back? What's the back? Yeah, we might need to. Uh, let's see. Do we need to? Uh, all right, there. Oh, yep. A little bit lower, a little bit to your left, right, right, right. A uh, little bit more. <laughs> Boom! Look at this. He's become a Bayheim. He's officially a member of the Bayheim family. We, uh, you know, not to pull back the curtain, but a member of the family reached out. Love all the support Sean's been giving over the years, and wanted to make sure that we could get. Uh, get you uh, a proper kit, as the uh, footy fans would call. No, it. actually, Benedict Dan told. <laughs> uh, shout out to him. Right. He uh, hooked me up with this sick, sick uh, Buddy Bayheim jersey. Love this thing. Cannot wait to be drunk in uh, March, hanging out in Vegas, rocking just P- this. In picking a pair boogers of like his dad. P- picking boogers like <laughs> like Jim Bayheim. Can I can I can I make a suggestion? I think we need a proper ma- like not to steal an, an idea from other shows, but I do think we need some sort of pick Dundee mannequin in here um, mm. with a TV head that we can just put jerseys on and have Colby be remote. Oh, I, okay. I think actually that's I, I'm, as I'm thinking, looking <laughs> at Colby on the screen in front of me, I think Colby needs to be over here somewhere. We need a representative pick Dundee <laughs> and yes. Yeah. That will wear the Bayheim Jersey when you're not wearing, maybe, maybe we just have buddy Bayheim as an intern, but it's just a mannequin. I now have two college basketball jerseys, which I will <laughs> rotate. Uh, one is uh, one's way cooler than Buddy Bayheim, Syracuse jersey, and then awesome. the other CJ McCollum Lehigh jersey. Both just guys who went on epic runs. That's a good point. We need to get more awesome jerseys. Like, why don't we have a Kelly LePepe jersey yet? Yeah, it's- what are you doing, Colby? I saw you and CJ. You guys had a couple's night over at the uh, LMU I game. I saw that you had your picnic basket, some wine and cheese. <laughs> You're hanging. Oh, what's oh, going on? Oh, he's got the LMU <laughs> lion. Right where the fuck am I at? That looks more like a like a I don't know like a flower that someone would use to represent Virginia. I mean, I, imagine uh, imagine Colby wearing that while also having Colorado State minus five and a half. A true and the ultimate hit. the ultimate Benedict move. 
Hey, I'm wearing this LMU Lions head, but I I like Colorado State laying the points. Well, typically he's not a when in Rome guy either. We saw him at the Rose Bowl. He really was uh, was going after the Rose oh, Bowl. Oh, he hated everyone at the Rose Bowl. I, both, that, both teams. Well, when I think the about other it, fans, security personnel. No, I was on UCLA that game. No, I was on weren't. UCLA game. But you were rooting against yeah. them. You didn't even name yes. the thing that I thought Colby went after the hardest at that at that uh, incident. The, oh, Ro- the Rose Wade. Bowl, no, the, the Rose Bowl itself. Oh, yes, the stomping on the bleachers. He was he <laughs> yeah. was trying to stomp the bleachers out. Uh, the Rose Bowl, you know, I feel like they've lost their way. They they, they don't want college football to happen at the Rose mm. Bowl. We'll see if these Michigan and Alabama. Fa- well, Michigan fans are kind of private school pussies, but. Um, uh, Alabama fans, they'll be stomping on there. All right, stomping out the bleachers, stomping out the bleachers. Hey, uh, roll tide. Speaking of New Year's Day, you know what comes before that? New Year's Eve, and we got a awesome New Year's Eve party, uh, aka a live stream. We're gonna be uh, drinking, doing some live drafts, giving out some pickums, uh, just degeneracy. Some hot toddies. On. Hot toddies. Yeah, that's I, I I got some Baileys. Maybe we'll do some Baileys. Maybe we uh, may, maybe maybe we can do some um uh, Bob we talked about bobbing for apples. Yes. You talked about bobbing for apples, right? I uh, if you wanna I do like apples. If you wanna bring the tub and the apples, I will bob eh, not happening. <laughs> so uh we're gonna be giving out some prizes, just basically having a big SGPN D Gen party. Uh, that is starting towards the end of the early games on Sunday, 1230 PM Pacific. So we're going to sweat out the end of the early games, give out some, uh, you know, some pickums, maybe some live action for the afternoon games, generally get uh, nuts and uh, have a lot of fun. So we're going to be taking calls, having guests, giving out prizes, the whole thing, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast Smash! this Sunday, new year's Eve. Um, I'm, I was looking at. I was rapidly running to look at the college basketball slate that will be going on while we'll be uh, partying, and there are some games that. Oh yeah, because tip off between uh, tw- uh, one o'clock, a couple one o'clock games, some one thirty games, and some two o'clock games, and even some later games. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to force Colby to call in, talk <laughs> talk about some beautiful college basketball. I can do that. I can certainly do that, and uh, yeah, I mean the Monday slate's a little weak, but Sunday slate is decent. Let's go. Yeah, we'll be live. So we we'll, we'll want basically we'll be looking for some live some live action. Looking for live action. But we can always go with Noah if he's better. Yeah. No Noah, Noah loves uh Noah's a big SGPN guy. Got to support Noah. He'll be there. Well, I know you can Noah have him there. on because he can talk. He can talk terrible Detroit Lions football oh, at the same wow. time. Oh wow. Waste of a franchise. Wow. Colby holds it against Noah that he follows the NFL a little bit. <laughs> no, it's, a it's, the, it's the Lions. If he was a Bears fan, he would get a pass. Mm. It's just the Detroit Lions, the ultimate failure of an organization. Wow. Colby's hot this morning. Yes, coming in hot via remote. It's not. We're not even talking about bowls, Colby. We're talking about sweet, sweet college basketball. Still angry. Still angry. Got Still that angry? chip on his shoulder. <laughs> All right, Kramer. Let's get to it. All right, I noticed there's no anonymous animals in the sheets watching with us as we put our picks in live. I've also noticed that producer Josh has not already filled out his picks, so we'll be getting the the fact uh, we ourselves will get a, a view of Josh putting his picks in. So it's yes, a, not it's almost great, like not uh, great week for the uh, picks. At least for me, I was three and eleven. Still, still managed to get a lock in though. Uh, and my lock uh-huh. record, I'm holding on to that at 79. percent People are driving around with fat bellies, Sean. Don't make them dizzy with this spin. I mean, mean? I, I just said, how is it spinning by saying I was three and eleven? Oh, the crescendo to the lock. I, I, I appreciate I, and, it, but and one of the correct picks. <laughs> Luckily, I got my one of my locks. It, right. it does feel good when you had a horrible day, but you did get the lock right. Like, all right, my, not a loss. My dog money line Butler was one of the worst oh. beats of the college basketball season with uh. You know, I was up, also on it. Yeah, they're up three with what? Uh, with under six seconds, they don't foul, and they, at the buzzer, essentially Providence hits a three to send the game to overtime, and then we lose the 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 point spread in overtime. Unbelievable fucking beat, and just stupid. I thought we I thought we figured this out to foul under six seconds when the opposing team has the ball when you're up three. And this no is what, one comes to this the dunk. Is what, this is what I get for going against Providence. I have teams. I should always pick these teams, and then I decide to venture out. Colby 
made a good case. I was also on Butler, Butler money line. Not only did they lose the game, but then they also don't get the cover in overtime. It was idiots. It was insane. No, but you know, we're not super sharp like Kramer. Nope. Nope. Always Providence was always the right side, in my opinion. <laughs> Got you on that right side. Anything else you want to uh, re- reflect on, Colby? I'm looking forward to conference play. We got conference play coming in now for the most part uh, at a lot of these conferences. I guess there's a couple more non-con games for the for the majors. Uh yeah. but like Pac-12 conference play starts with this oh, slate. Basically the new year. Like th- this feels like this is how it shapes up every year. You come out of the new year, like the schools that were like taking a break or whatever for the holidays, you get right back into that um that sweet, sweet conference action. Maybe some teams, I guess you're right. We'll have some, uh, some cakewalk division two, like tune ups, but a lot of them jump right back into it. Uh, speaking of which our Washington state Cougars, they're heading to uh, Salt Lake city for a matchup against Utah, a little pack 12 pack 12 opener here. I assume I, maybe some of these teams, I guess, played some, some early season conference games, but uh, the bulk of the schedule starts now. Utah Lane six and a half. These are real numbers because we're talking about games on Friday right now. I assume Colby. No. Oh well. No. These were not okay. out yet. These oh were yeah. Not we're, out we're, yet. Today's yeah. only Thursday. Got it. Yeah. Um. So this is a a pick Dundee special. And I was hmm. thinking that maybe. Oh. Maybe it could be seven and a half. Oh wow. What do you think, Sean? Uh, I think you got it. I think oh, six yeah? and a half okay. is fine. Okay. Maybe it's let's, seven. Let's see what Sean's. Sean's probably on the favorite if he's if he's agreeing. With no, him. no, I I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm digging in here. I mean, Utah has been very good at home. The only two games they've lost have been neutral site against Houston and St. John. So, uh, you, you think they should be in a decent spot at elevation? Washington State coming in. How do you take Washington State in this spot? I, I don't know. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'm missing. Well, um, and especially so first, because first road game too, especially because uh, Joseph Yasufu, the former uh, Kansas Jayhawk and Drake Bulldog, uh, he is Bless a game you. time decision with a with a hip, and also uh, Dylan D- uh, Darling is is a game time decision for the Cougs. I'm all over Utah here. The the, the home atmosphere. It's Washington State's first true road game, which yeah. I think is something that Auto you fan. know. Yeah, auto fade for sure. Let's load up on the Utes. This place will be packed. A lot of soaking, perhaps. No, that's mm. that's BYU. But so, you know, so yeah. soak. I'm sure there's some soaking uh, in Salt Lake. Yeah, public school kids. I mean, they're they're maybe they're not their family's not paying that hefty tribute. They're just going there for the good soaking. I, and Washington State can't hit a free throw to save their life. Sixty seven percent. If you need one we're, final. <laughs> now that we're in conference play, Sean's really prepared to pull out the free throw metric. So come get, on. Get ready to hear. You act that? like that doesn't matter. Every no. meanwhile, every one of these fucking games are at least like eighty percent comes down to the one and ones at the end of the game. College. Uh, yeah. Am I wrong? No, no. I I I'm making fun of you, but it is one of the the key factors when you're breaking down a matchup, especially as the games get more juicy. Utah, you gotta lay the number. And as Colby mentioned, the the easy system. The first road game of the season system compounds when it's your it's also conference yeah um, play and it's this late into the season it's certainly going to be a tough one San Diego State six p.m. on the West Coast heads up to Spokane Washington to take on the private school shenanigans of Gonzaga hmm. Mark Few um, Mark had, had a few had, had some had some time off. Um, hopefully he he Colby, stayed How safe. are you guys not using that as his nickname? Mark had a few. <laughs> Mark a few do, too yeah, many. That's true. That that I like that. I like a that. few too many. Mark a few too many is pretty good. Mark uh, few too many. <laughs> uh, Mark A like his middle initial is A. Mark, Mark A, a few, few too, too many. many. <laughs> it's uh, it's so clunky. It works. Gonzaga laying seven and a half here against our gals. Uh, I've been really dialed into our gals right now. Well, I've been off on Gonzaga. I feel like every time I play them, they 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 fuck it up, and every time I fade them, they they light it up. Uh, um, a lot of the and a lot of these neutral site games, I think, have been my recent struggles. I'm blaming all on these stupid oh, neutral site games. That's good. I'm with Colby. That's, not going to take yeah. any accountability. Find a reason to blame it all yeah. in the system. Yeah, yeah, that's very mo- progressive of you. <laughs> my my thoughts are kind of to take San Diego State, but what do you, Ryan? If you have a good handle on them, I think I just they think looked okay in their uh, 
their true away games against BYU and Grand Canyon. I mean, but not great. They lost both those. Um, but the, like you, you could argue that they they at least got a test. And I think that's the yeah. key um, to this kind of matchup. They got tested, and it, you know, some could argue that Gonzaga is fraudulent, and maybe Gonzaga isn't that much better than, say, Grand Canyon. And, uh, and, and we have an official line of minus six, so bring it down okay. one. Nice. I mean, it, I, that that makes sense because I was I still like San Diego State. I just think it's a big number. Gonzaga is a name brand at this point, and they're not what their name brand suggests they are. Meanwhile, San Diego State is like in in a weird way. San Diego State is in the Gonzaga role here against Gonzaga, catching a way too big number. Our gals all the way money line sprinkle. Ooh, really, Colby? Uh, you concur? Uh, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride <laughs> I'm gonna ride the uh, the Zags here. I think it's a get right spot for him. Uh, San Diego State, you know, coming off that big Stanford win where I felt. I felt like San Diego State got pretty lucky to cover that game. So they're going to go up there to the kennel. This place gets fucking lit. This ain't going to happen. They know they played in the national championship last year. Uh, So I'm all over the Zags minus the six here at the kennel. Yeah. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to go Gonzaga minus six, but I I don't feel great about either side. Battle tested. Take the points. Washington. Oh wow! Nothing but now that we're in conference play, you see all these good games we get to talk about. No more crappy teams. Colby's loading up the six pack with nothing but Power Five. Crack open stuff. those cold ones. Just a lot of Pac-12 action. Wash what Pac- Pac-12 must uh, own Friday nights. Washington, and this is great too, Sean. We'll have a lot of sweats during the Veasan show, or yeah, at least leading up into the Veasan show. Washington heads to Boulder, Colorado, where Colorado's laying nine. And Dion recently proclaimed that had he gone 13 and 0, the committee would not have left him out of the playoffs. So, uh, <laughs> swagger is high. Uh, Huskies, a uh, different Huskies, come into. Who is he trying to insult there? I think he's setting himself up for years to come. I think he's just pointing out that like, um, Prime. like my my antics, like I think maybe their message is my antics would have gotten my team into the playoffs. Maybe you should do the same. Oh, okay. poser ass Mike Norvell. You yeah, know, it, it does feel Ooh. like he's he's really bitter. Well, I think what he's saying is the future of coaching mm-hmm. comes with being a politician, campaigning, like having yeah. a media presence to sway the quote voters. And yeah, so uh, Boulder in good hands. Boulder laying nine here against the Washington Huskies. Colby, you're gonna have to lead off here. I don't think I've watched either one of these teams play, and you're a big uh, fan of Boulder, so. Yeah, I'm a big bus fan, but uh, their star freshman Cody Williams is out, and I know mm. they've still played solid with him out with uh, OJ Simpson's son K- KJ Simpson, who's a baller. Uh, but the Washington Huskies have been pretty good this year. I know, and 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 this is something to monitor is Frank Kepnang, the Oregon transfer at the center spot, game time decision. Uh, but I just think nines. I I you know the buffs the buffs have been so questionable. Historically, even though I love Colorado, like laying a big number, I they got to earn it for me, and especially when one of their better players on their roster is out, I cannot lay nine. Give me the Washington Huskies, even though Mike Hopkins, uh, former Jim Beheim assistant, you know, clearly underachieving there in Seattle, but this year seems to be his best team to me that maybe he's ever had, uh, at least at least from a result standpoint thus far. His own cooking. Well, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Seattle, Colby. They needed double overtime to uh, beat Seattle. Although you imagine that's a rivalry game, and and Seattle was up for it. They also only lost to three against San Diego State on a neutral court. So it been decent away from Seattle. Nine points feels like a lot. To your point, I mean Colorado's offense is amazing. But do I do I fade a team? Do I take a road team at elevation? That's always scary. Uh, yeah. I mean that I, I think, I think you do uh, mainly just because both struggle to shoot the three. Uh, I, I just think nine's a little too much right now. Colorado has got to prove it to me. I know it's their best roster Colorado, that they've ever had. Colorado shooting the three. Well though, aren't they? They're seven. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they don't shoot a lot of threes is my point. They, okay. w- yes. Percentage. They're shooting at a high percentage, but the, the, I think they're uh 203rd in, in uh, shooting 
actual threes. So they're, they're three point attempted to field goal attempted. They're three hundred twentieth in the country. So they're they're like bottom ten percent. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go Washington. It sounds like you guys are on Washington. As I well. don't know. I I was actually going to come into this saying Washington mm. appears to be fraudulent. They've they've struggled against teams they shouldn't struggle against. They've gotten beat by teams that are better than them. I mean, I guess the one what what's their win against the team that, that that's better than them? Maybe Gonzaga. Uh, one Xavier. I, can we also Xavier, hit on this? Okay. Students are in neutral session. Is a good win. Yeah. I. I oh, but I. I don't know. Sometimes with this stuff, the the talent just. I, I'll take Colorado. I I do I do think this this Washington team might not be very good. They might be underperforming. And Sean's wearing this fine Cuse jersey, and maybe Cuse. Bay, the Bayham magic. The the coaching tree has has any Bay, of Bayham's assistants ever had success? Rick Pitino. Oh, all right, that's fair. But he doesn't run that system. Has anyone who ran the 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 like the same? Q zone ever had success outside of Syracuse. I feel like we've heard like, oh, they're gonna run that there, and then it just goes away because you can't run it. Anyway, yeah. give me Colorado yeah. laying the points. Shocked to hear Colby's on the others. I whatever Colby did. Colby that game, always picks against Colorado. Whatever as Colby a, as a fan, he's he's more cynical, which almost makes me want to yeah. take Colorado because I feel like when Colby's fading his teams. Sean, when you Col when you when Colby's picking a Colorado game, you just go the opposite way. Yeah, he's always too close to the situation. But I, I, I like. I think the number's too high. I All think right. you got to take Washington plus nine. Although is I'm this, scared of this. Is one. this real or fake number? Uh, that's a real one. Okay, let's go. Arizona, more Pac-12 basketball. Arizona heads to Berkeley to take on the filthy hippies of Cal. Cal catching seventeen and a half points here, which is. That's insane. Seven thirty on the West Coast, so we're gonna have to have action here. Any chance Cal uh, would be a juicy money line option uh, for Friday night, Colby? I mean, I I think Cal is much better than their record. Uh, Mark Madsen, okay. remember Mark Madsen, oh, the yeah, fucking terrible it. dance. Uh, uh, yes. He's the head coach there, and he came over from Utah Valley, did a great job there uh, with the Wolverines. Uh, and this is year one, and I think he's doing a pretty good job. He, they took San Diego State to overtime in San Diego. Uh, lost that game by by nine in overtime, but they they played well there. They beat a good Santa Clara team. They they lost at Hinkle Fieldhouse to Butler in like two or three overtimes, a uh, game that I thought they should have won. And uh, Chris Beard just got him the other day. I feel like, but uh, no, I think you got to take the points here. Like for Arizona, is this a get up spot? Even though they they just lost to Florida Atlantic and and you know the maybe the game of the year so far, but uh, I I I just think it's way too many points. For a Cal team that I think is better than their record, so I'm all over the, the neutral Golden site Bears. game. Yeah, the neutral site game they played against Chris Beard in Mississippi was in Texas, so barely a neutral site game. They've had a ton of not ga like games not at home to start the year. I, you know, I don't hate the angle of taking the 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 big points here against an Arizona team that, like you said, are. I'm not sure. Arizona is going to be hyper focused coming back off a break with a road, back to back road spots in the Bay Area. They're the, staying the in concern town. Though, for, the concern, though, as Colby mentioned, it, is will they get up after that double overtime loss to FAU? Like, is this a bounce back spot for Arizona? Hey, we just lost to FAU. We need to kind of. If there wasn't a week off, maybe. Hmm, that's fair. And, and also, they're staying there. Like they're not going home. They're staying in the area. They're going to be at a hotel. I, don't know, I, I just feel. I also like trouble. think. I also think this line is based on like former Cal teams. This one is like this is a much more. He went out in the portal, brought in Fardaz Amik, who's from uh, Texas Tech. Uh, you got Jalen Cohn, who I know you're familiar with. He was at Virginia Tech. Um, they they brought in more talent. They got Askew, the former Kentucky Wildcat transfer. It's too many points. Too many points, especially yeah, for a team you. on the road. Yeah. I like it, Cal. I, 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 what, what will the Arizona kids be doing Friday night after the game? I think they have a nice tour over to Alcatraz planned for Saturday in between oh, the games. Sourdough bread bowls, come on! Oh, you got to hit. The They're going to be riding the trolleys. <laughs> uh, the Garibaldi chocolate shop. You know, House. Of, what is it? House of Prime Rib. Have you guys been there before? They're going to go to go to inside a Walgreens and take whatever they want. You know, all the San Francisco <laughs> traditions. Take yeah, a shit it. next to t take a shit outdoors next to a uh, stoplight. Yeah, take a shit on a pile of hypodermic needles. <laughs> Just live in this yeah, the San Square. Francisco treat. 
a Union Square uh, human taking a shit viewing. <laughs> That would be great if that's yeah. Cal's mascot. <laughs> they build a theater uh, around Cal, it. Cal's mascot is a needle exchange program <laughs> with just a shit emoji on top of it. <laughs> Arizona State heads to Palo Alto. So uh, Stanford will be playing Arizona on Sunday. First, they get Arizona State on Friday, 8 p.m. Late one here, Sean. So we'll, we'll have to make sure we have position on this one, too. Uh, Stanford. Like you said, looked pretty good against San Diego State from what I watched of that game. Uh, laying four and a half here, Colby. I hate this game. Uh, this is what was just because Stanford has looked better this year. They like Jared Haas is somehow still has a job, and they look like a better team. But yet they're still five and five. Uh, and then Bobby Hurley at Arizona State. Is one Ooh. of the hardest handicaps oh. I think in all of college basketball. Um, uh, I mean, they've me- been Arizona State's just been shooting horrible. I mean, from two point, they're uh, from three from behind the arc, twenty nine percent free throw, sixty two percent. Like, come on, you're Arizona State. You got to hit shots if you're if you're gonna have a chance here. Uh, and then no one's probably going to be at this game. So I, I actually think we should take Arizona state. I understand the last two times I've taken them. They got drilled by Northwestern in, in Phoenix. Um, but I just think Stanford always plays down to their competition. That's why they struggled, you know, historically, whether it's Pacific, whether it's Santa Clara under Jared Haas, they, they just play down to their competition. So I will ride Bobby Hurley and hopefully some of these uh, ASU fans, the fake tits will be bouncing. Uh, you know, no, no one from Arizona is going to be at this game. Well, again, they're in town for the weekend as well. Maybe you're taking a trip to the Bay for the for the New Year's uh, holiday, and you're uh, taking in a couple basketball games. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is Stanford. But Stanford doesn't have a crowd when they are in session. Yeah, like that's, that's better. For them. They don't to, need they don't need distractions like the crowd. But they're used to that. No one gives. Remember those stories about how Christian McCaffrey could ride his scooter home from the football games and no one knew who he was because no one gives a shit about sports at Stanford. Yeah, that uh, this is going to be no different. Your handicap of the students aren't there. It doesn't matter for this game. Give me Stanford. Yeah, I'm with you. Even though they 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 uh, in the end lost by I can't, fourteen. I can't trust the team that shoots that bad on the road. You can't trust either of these teams. Yeah, that's that's, that's also fair. fair. <laughs> they they lost the f- by fourteen to San Diego State, but I came away from that game like Colby said, feeling a little bit impressed by Stanford in that spot. So yeah. Uh, and I would Stanford say Stanford has at least shown some signs of life in my mind. Per most rankings, this isn't necessarily a play down game either, Colby. To your point, so uh, I think Stanford might fancy this a, a winnable game as they just watched Arizona State in a virtual home game get their ass beat by the Stapler uh, Clan, aka Northwestern. You got to be careful when you say uh, combine Stapler and Clan, right? You're really oh, pushing that's, the that's fair. That's fair. I, 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 I was always under the impression they sewed those things together, oh, but okay. if they were putting, if they were using staplers to make those uh, hoods, that's <laughs> negative. That's real minus EV stuff. Hey, you know what? Positive uh, EV prize fix, prize fix.com slash SGPN promo code SGPN. Get the hundred percent deposit match up to $100. Uh, Colby, we got some uh, projections here for Thursday night. So if you're, if you're streaming this live, got a chance to get down on these uh, UCLA, Oregon state, um, Jordan Pope, uh, Lazar Stefanovic, Sebastian Mack, Dylan Andrews, Adam or Adem Bona. Any of these uh, guys jump out at you? Uh, what? Who's for, Bona? I mean, Bona, Bo, <laughs> Bona is a stud. Uh, Adam, Adam and, Bona. And, Adam and Bona. And we have to yeah. add a uh, Deem. A D E M. It's like what your parents don't know how to spell Adam. What are we? What are we doing here with a- Adam? Is that a real name? Uh, I've seen a lot of names. Sean's First coming time after I've you. If you got a Adam. fake name, Sean. I mean, if, if I'm C- the name police. If CJ's the the bet detective, uh, yeah. Sean I'm is the so, name PD. So, some sort of authoritative uh, organization <laughs> that checks your name. What, what do we what, what's, what's, like the, what, what's our number with Bona? Bona is at seventeen and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Okay, I will, I will, I will take the the higher than that. Mainly okay. because uh, I think they're due. By the way, I'm all over. I'm all over UCLA. I think they're going to go to Corvallis. That you know, after getting worked by Maryland the other day, 
Oregon State is is trash. And when you look at what Bona Bona's a complete player. He got ten boards against uh yeah, Cal State Northridge good. the other day. Uh he's, Go he, Matadors. I, I would assume Northridge got that win. Yeah. Uh I, I would assume he's going to score 10 to 12 points. Then uh, he's been great on the boards all year. You know, he got 11, 11 boards uh, against uh, the, f- the fucking long Island shocks. Uh, but yeah, do that. He's also uh, w- really good on the defensive end. So he can get a steal here, steal there. Um, give me Bona higher Bona on the more there prize fix.com slash SGPN promo go to SGPN hundred percent deposit match up to $100. Maybe even uh, tied together with some Thursday night football mm. action. I think that's what we do, Sean. Uh, on on Sunday, we we go for a lot of oh, mo- cross do, sports. do some crazy wild ass cross sports stuff. Ooh. Like hey, what's what happens on New Year's Eve stays on New Year's Eve. Let's uh, we maybe some esports. We tune in, check <laughs> oh, check man. out. Uh, yeah, a they Twitch really stream. they have it all. Esports, college football, college basketball. And I'm thinking about how we can be in front of God's eye. Oh, and, and right, the what's the um. What are the uh, what are the bowl games going on at that time, or are there any on New Year's Eve? Well, did they did they get did they graciously move college aside football for, is like a true beta when it comes to competing with the NFL. oh when they see an alpha come like the national they, football they league. slide to the side real quick. Um, let's see, yeah, they complete no games. black hole on <laughs> Sunday. So, Soft, but college basketball squeaking some games in. Uh, we might even have some NBA. Uh, we do, Sean. We'll have uh, some potential NBA action going. I see that we're going to have some potential uh, New Year's Eve Counter Strike activity. Oh yes, load up! So someone's going to win us bony bonus points by uh, figuring all that out. All right, moving along. A lot to get to, and I uh, one of us has a lunch date. Nine. Oh, we're moving <laughs> along to Saturday now. Fake line alert, aka these are were created by our college basketball originator, Pick Dundee. Pitt, we really need to create a, a, a separate originator character for Colby. <laughs> Maybe some sort of like older Italian gentleman. Pittsburgh heads to Cuse. Um, I'll let Sean lead off here, being that he's wearing a Syracuse jersey. This is a wee game. This is a wee game for him. Uh, Cuse laying a point here against. Jeff Capel and the uh, Dum Dums. I every time I see Jeff Capel, I just think this man does not have the same level of intelligence as most of these other coaches. How is he still a coach? And yet, then I look at his team and I'm like, oh shit, they're good this year. I have to tolerate this. I have to say nice things about Jeff Capel. Uh, he, he they made the NCAA tournament year a year ago. Um, I know it's disgusting. But you have Syracuse that's playing man to man now. They're not doing the zone. So take that Bayheim jersey off. All right. Oh, wow. Uh and uh yeah, no, Syracuse Syracuse is a, is an interesting team. They drilled Oregon at the Pentagon there in South Dakota. Great win. Um they're playing at a pretty fast pace. I think they're a top forty team in the in pace. Uh meanwhile, Pitt slows it down. Uh I'm gonna take the Q's. I think the Q's at home under this Carrier new Dome? In, yeah, yeah, that Carrier filthy Dome, place. early yeah. earlier t- early tip. Place is gonna be lit. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, their fans showed up for what was it? Uh some shitty opponent uh the last time they stepped on the hardwood. I thought they wouldn't. They showed up. So I do think it will be lit. Gimme the Q's minus one. Pitt Pitt's been all right this year, but you know, that dub V team's not as good as what we thought they would be. So I think, you know, they're a little bit of fool's gold. Let's see them go win on the road in a in a key ACC game. Yeah, I mean, honestly, and to your point, you look at who they've played recently. Um, you know, outside of that West Virginia win, no, nothing really to write home about. I uh, mean, they also have North Carolina on deck. I don't know if that matters. Um, Syracuse has Duke on deck, so you got a little little bit both ways. Uh, I like the home team. Yeah, Cuse rolls at home, and, and that's on the C Dub guys. So check it out. I, right after Dawson's Creek Marathon. C W CW is so small and no one likes it yet, so Colby's into it. That's why he's playing. He's just giving it free promotion. It's one of those vintage uh, TV networks. The, the ACC really <laughs> has it? been ACC has been very crafty in their television negotiations. <laughs> Liberty heads to Birmingham, Alabama. So this is a neutral site game featuring Liberty and Alabama in Birmingham. What the fuck does the city of Birmingham have? That they're getting all these games, like bowl games, 
neutral site college basketball game. How many wheels are they greasing? Oh, they got the will. the USFL's hub was there. RIP. I, if there was a state <laughs> that their their entire government said we just want to spend money on sports, it probably would be Alabama. So it's not that surprising, I guess. Hey, I wish that would happen to California. Uh, a lot of places to play out here. Uh, how do you feel about this neutral site? Semi home. For no, Alabama, it'll be lit. It'll be lit with Alabama fans. I feel like most of Birmingham is Alabama fans. Uh, they, you know, for, for a long time they played the uh, the Auburn Alabama game at uh, Legion Field there. So Alabama knew that that they would have the masses of of fans there uh, before Pat Dye demanded it to be a home and home. Uh, so I this think this has been history with Colby Dan. Yeah. But no, that's what I'm saying. I think they try to play in Birmingham because they have a big ass fan base in Birmingham. So there this place will still be lit. Uh but having said that, the Flame and Libs are a good team. They're ten and three. Oh no. And I mean, I just feel like they got that Fowell blood money. I think they can cover this number. The the, the the thing that's scary to me is Liberty plays incredibly slow. Alabama plays incredibly fast. Yeah. So momentum this, this are, game could get out of hand. M- momentum's a real thing, but I also think Bama. How much is Bama getting up for a Liberty game? Yeah, that's true. I mean, this is y- you. You want to talk about calendar spot? This certainly is for uh, Liberty. I mean, they're not looking ahead to Boyce. Um, oh, were well, you sure? <laughs> the Boyce Bulldogs, uh, Western Kentucky, Jacksonville State. They don't really. I mean, this is their. This is Actually, their ultimate get up spot. Actually, on 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 better thought, let's let's play my music. <laughs> Alabama minus the points. <laughs> well, Alabama are you minus the, the switch, points. Colby? Uh, well, just the fact that the, their record in Birmingham and also the fact yeah. that they beat uh, they beat Liberty by thirty six last year. Uh, well, so I, that's I enough for me. Look, yeah, I would look at. I mean, the game that I was going to bring up is Liberty at FAU. They lost by 25. So, and the pacing that you highlighted, eh, if Alabama gets out to a lead, I think they're just going to gun it and there's going to be no turning back. So I think Alabama minus nine and a half is the play Kramer. Do you agree? I Sorry. I was going down a real uh, path here because I was, I wanted to see, is this, are the Bryce, are the Boyce bulldogs actually uh, going to be some sort of competition here? Did you know what division they play in, Colby? I don't believe so. I'm going to say they are, they are in the top ten of the NCCAA in the NCCAA coaches poll, the National Christian Collegiate Athletic Association. I th- I just should learned we, something completely new. Why, should we, hey, should we what, take them? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, what kind of what kind of bag drop operation is this for Liberty? That they're playing this random collegiate. I mean, this is going to be a score where we see Liberty win by a hundred points. So they're not looking ahead to that game. Just to close the loop, there, Alabama. They every time they've played a top team, they've uh, they've gone down. Uh, is Liberty a top team, Colby? Uh, potentially within their conference, but uh, no, not a top team in the right. nation. No, Alabama yeah. rolls. Also, you got you always got to circle those recruiting games. Coach gets a little bit up because you know there's a couple more envelopes being mm. uh, dropped in the soup pocket. These are these are like the meet and greet games. You gotta you gotta show out for them. And, and co- college athletics are still all about it. Indiana State has the East Lansing take on Michigan State. I assume this is just to sell old jerseys of Magic and Bird. Michigan State minus ten. Yes, this was what the 1979 or 78. 79, I believe national championship uh, rematch on the, on the hardwood there. Have you guys caught this Indiana state team? Because they're fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, they're who would you 11 root for and one that? Colby. Who did What's, you root for in the Indiana state, Michigan state game? You know, I hate Sparty, man. You gotta go. Yeah. Gotta go sycamores. So you rooted you know for the mean? whites. I, I like a guy that put, I, li- I, I like a guy that gets done playing basketball and then puts in a driveway for his mother. You know what I mean? I will say like, if you just explain to a younger athlete, hey, um, hey, Anthony Davis, like you know how you keep complaining that your back hurts? Well, maybe you should try laying down some concrete in the off season. You fucking <laughs> pussy. <laughs> like, like Larry Bird's career being cut short by doing too much lawn work and home improvement 
<laughs> it's like he's one of the greatest players of all time. Anytime you hear some of these all time great athletes and how they're like, it's one thing to hear, well, Mickey Manny, M- Mantle was a raging alcoholic. And that's what cut his career short. But for Larry Bird, it was it was fixing like, his mom's driveway. It was riding his fucking lawnmower and and and, and throwing down the fucking backhoe. Yeah, on. of course LeBron James can play till he's forty five. He doesn't have to, uh, you know, pave his mom's driveway. No, I mean, Larry Bird didn't have to pave his parents' driveway either. He like just went out of his. He's a redneck. He feel why would I pay someone else to do it when I I can I'm perfectly fine. That's yeah. it's the to- and, and, anyone- and, and he was an alcoholic also. So yeah. uh- <laughs> oh, you just thirsty, just thirsty. <laughs> so Indiana State uh, is just an, a dynamite offense. That's what you're saying, Colby. Uh, this is a very fun team to watch. If you haven't caught them, uh, I, I'm very excited to to watch this game because Michigan State's all of a sudden playing much better basketball. You saw that with the Baylor game and a few other performances since then. Uh, but Indiana State, man, it, I I really think this could be a team that that could be uh you know a team that could really surprise su- surprise in March this year. The why the, is the, the number so big? I mean, I know you made it, but but the, this feels like the number is too big. I mean, yeah, maybe it's down to eight. I don't know. Ma- no, no, maybe no, some- no, no. To be honest, to be to be clear, the projections, like the Ken Palms of the world, agree with your number. I'm just shocked that yeah, it's so. Most such people a big have number. it as nine or ten. So I I I think you got to take Indiana State plus ten. I I I struggle to take Michigan State against good teams or decent teams as a big favorite. Now, certainly. They, to Colby's point, they put it on Baylor, but I don't know. Well, it seems like Michigan State found the stride a little bit. Found out that yeah. you know they were they were looking really bad earlier in the year when James Madison took them down, and a few other schools were pushing them to the brink. Uh, but this Indiana State, this feels like Indiana State Super Bowl, right? Tough road spot. That's that's what's yeah. scary. Yeah, but man, the guard play for Indiana State. If you haven't caught this team with uh, Isaiah Swope and 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 Jason Kent and Julian Larry, all studs, man. They're a fun team to watch. I, I'm all over the points here. I think it's worth sprinkling on the money line just because I think they can give uh, Michigan State a lot of ma- matchup problems. Well, and they're. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're talking about Michigan State, if you like that side, you're talking yourself into how they've looked recently, and. The fact that Indiana State, their toughest road game at Alabama, they lost by uh, 102 to 80. Now, granted, that was earlier in the season. I think Indiana State's I, playing better, but I also think that Alabama is like the like a better version of them. Where I don't know Michi- if Michigan State's going to run run them up to 100 points. I guess that would be my my counter argument there. That's kind of a they they play the same a similar style, and if if they're just not going to be able to outgun Alabama, this could always be an outcome for a point a game that had 180 points. This game has is projected to have, you know, 20 30 p- fewer points, and so the the likelihood of the game getting out of hand, I guess, is why I would take the points. But I but I agree with that because they they haven't really been tested, so be a good game to watch. Indiana State consensus. Yeah. Colby, did we watch? We were watching uh, this Indiana State team play someone over the last month on a Saturday. Maybe it was. Did they play Bradley? Let me see. This guy. Uh, yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Yeah, who was Bradley. It? Early yep. conference game. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. We watched this game, and I, I guess I, I caught the part where they just got hot because they, they just lit, they lit, they lit it up. And so, yeah, fun team to watch. Let's see uh, them hopefully not get blown out here. Nice of you to put the Hokies on the card, Colby. 11 a.m. on the West Coast. We're heading to Winston Salem or Wake Forest, laying a point and a half against my Hokies. I'm really focused on the football team right now, so the basketball team is going to have to win me back. Are they going to win me back here on the road to begin ACC play? No. Uh, look, Sean Padula is a game time decision. There, uh, he's a game time decision. We don't know if he's playing, and that's a, that's obviously a key ingredient for their success. Uh, and I I think Steve Forbes might have his best team he's ever had at Wake Forest. Now I know he's been on the outside of the tournament, kind of a bubble team the past couple of years. Uh, this year, I think I think they might have something. You go back to the Rutgers game. You go back to the Florida game. Uh, they've looked pretty good. They've looked pretty good of late. I feel I feel like they might have had some struggles early November. But they've gotten it together, and the fact they're at home. I know Wake Forest traditionally, especially when you think Wake Forest, you think normally their football squad. They don't normally have a great home environment. The basketball, I feel like, has a little bit more. Uh, and I think this team is is just playing at a pretty good level now. Both teams play at a really slow pace, which is surprising because I feel like Forbes teams traditionally play at a faster pace. But 
Uh, yeah, I, I think Wake Forest. Their their offense has been pretty good this year. I think they can get it done, uh, and I think them being at home is all the difference in this game. What's your take on the backup to Badula? Stein, uh, Rech, Rech Steiner, or whatever his name is. Yeah, I mean, I'd like my backup to be starting at home and not on the road in the ACC. So he's gotten some minutes over the last couple of games, but yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. He's a freshman. This is a tough spot. Virginia Tech does hit their free throws, right? Of course they do, but um, the problem is that the ball, the the majority of the ball handling is going to be either a freshman who's been playing okay recently, or Hunter Couture, who's anytime he's been relied on to be any sort anything more than just a guy who stands in the corner and shoots things get wonky. So uh, this is th- as a fan of the team, this is when you fade them uh, yeah, and I shout mean, out just oh, wake for us. No, I'm just saying a wake for us at home, just straight buzzsaw. I mean, um, I don't know. I, this is maybe one of their Mike tougher Young, tests, but I mean, they, they handled Florida pretty well. Mike young has always struggled early conference play on the road. Yeah. Uh, this is a good spot for wake. And also shout out to Chad G who's reminding me that I did have Boston college money line against uh, SMU here. Well, you, uh, Colby, to to clarify, you did that was not your money line dog for the podcast, but I well, think you I, mean, I like a lot that. of dogs. I like a I like a lot of dogs. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is a dog house. Well, did you did you and CJ do your bottom line uh, bombs uh, dogs edition? Uh, that's coming. That's coming later today. No, well, why, why one, didn't you schedule one thirty Pacific? The Boston College game one thirty Pacific. <laughs> Stay tuned. Over on the college Colby basketball and Michael Dick getting into dog business. Kramer, are you t- are you actually taking uh, Wake Forest laying the short number? Yeah, yeah. I am. Wow. Uh, you know, it's you know when you're the number two coach on the school, it's, I'm not paying you the the clearest focus <laughs> right now. So I'm just looking All for in uh, Coach Pry. Yeah, I just got got my Coach Pry calendar ordered up, ready to go. Getting lathered. Creighton. Who, by the way, I will have to talk to Josh about putting uh, staplers on the uh, cover photos. Creighton heads to Milwaukee. Wisconsin to take on Marquette. Good old fashioned uh, Midwestern battle here between two elite private schools. 11 a.m. on the West Coast. Four and a half Creighton is getting here on the road. Uh, and I just continue every Shaka. Shaka is still not an old man. This guy is going to be a strange looking old coach. Think about what he's going to look like in 15 years. He's already just, he's like shrinking. The hair situation is odd. What are you trying uh, he to fuck him? He doesn't seem to give a <laughs> shit. It's just off putting on the sideline. He used to be such an alpha uh, personality. Now it's like he's turning into that. He's like turning into a weird, bizarro version of that I've, guy that. Go ahead. I've never thought about a coach 15 years from now, how, how they're going to look. I just interesting, think he's, interesting. he looks. He Ryan looks like, goes deep with his hand. He, he looks like sh- he's turning into Schmeagles from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Great Schmeagles reference. Thank Ryan. you. Uh, yeah, it's the holidays, so I'm spending a lot of time with the kids. Uh, uh, I mean, again, uh, big big time matchup here. Is this the game of the morning? This is, mm. this is a nice little matchup, Colby. What are we doing? Uh yeah, it's a fantastic game. I mean, Marquette just drilled Georgetown. I was foolish enough to take Georgetown. This place will be rocking. Uh, but at the same time, Michael Crichton uh, just lo- you know just lost to Villanova at home. Can can they get back? To, How did uh, they lose that game? Losers. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bad look, man. They were even retiring the the uh, the jersey of uh, the, uh, coach's son. Um, <laughs> so even worse, I think they bounce back. These are always really close games. I feel like so. Give me the points. Anything over two or three, I th- I think you take. I think you take Michael Crichton. Uh, so give me the points. Crichton off a loss, I like. Um, even though it's a little scary, fading Marquette at home. But yeah, Crichton off a loss. Wow, they really you're. You're right, Colby. They wax Georgetown, eighty-one yeah. fifty-one. But um, yeah, Creighton's another level of competition. Uh, I, I think I think they can hang around in this game. Although, eh, what they, number are we dealing? Four and a half. Four and a half. That is, that is a big number. Kind of with Colby there. Might have to take the points. As right. much as I love a good favorite. Yeah, Ryan, you're you're bummed. You got no. Uh, you actually have a couple dogs on this slate. Uh, you know, it's conference play, Sean. It's getting serious time. It's getting serious. Hey, if you're serious about getting down on some parlays, you got to get serious and sign over. Uh, sign up over at hofbets.com. You can download the app or go to hofbets.com. Use a promo code SGPN. Get 50% off your first month. It is the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, game lines. Hall of Fame bets has you covered. 
Download the app or just go to hofbets.com. Start betting smarter, not harder with HOF bets. UCLA. UCLA heads to Eugene, Oregon to take on the Ducks. Oregon laying seven and a half points here. 1 p.m. on Saturday. Ah, the, the the jersey combo mixed with that just mind numbing uh like magic eye floor that they play on up there in Oregon. It is obnoxious. It's going to be hard to watch this one as an old guy. Well, Bill Walton's <laughs> probably going to be on the call, so well, as you walk through the redwoods, I wonder if he even notices the floor because it was probably <laughs> He was already probably tripping and seeing like acid <laughs> flashbacks of the forest on the floor. And now he's like, wait, everyone sees the forest on the floor. Uh, I, uh, just that if you've never, I got to find the narration of him just talking about what it's like to come down the two in the Angeles national forest, uh, the, uh, the, the trees cascade down the mountain and the velocity of the bike rides you with forward <laughs> momentum and you embrace the angelic beauty of the San Angeles region. Uh, <laughs> it's almost, it almost mixes with my Andrew luck. What a long, strange trip. It's been as the uh, UCLA Bruins head up to Oregon to square off against the ducks. When you I'm Google, I'm Googling this to see if I can find it. Cause it's from a broadcast of him doing like just putting Bill Walton uh, on the late night Pac-12 game is the most genius programming thing ESPN <laughs> ever did. But and, and putting him with someone that understands that. And he's so what, be, what are they going to do? Stoned. Have they announced what they're going to do with um, Bill Walton after the Pac-12 dissolves? They do they just release him back into the wild. What no, happens? What do you mean? I, they're just not going to tell him. <laughs> he doesn't know yet. You just put him on the late night Big no, Ten game. Just now. Pac-12 Network should just be Bill Walton. Give me so that's just all Bill yeah. Walton all day. Give me one game. Give me a late night game that's a big time matchup on the West Coast where Gus Johnson and Bill Walton are in the booth together. That's all I want. Just one time. See what happens. <laughs> just see what happens. What would happen with Bill Walton wants uh, to I slow it Gus, down? Gus, Gus Johnson wants to speed it up. Gus John I mean, styles make fights, but I think Gus Johnson would just strangle Bill Walton. Maserati Marv. You know, Bill, this reminds me yeah, of the time that me. I spent a summer in the jungles. <laughs> Swimming with anacondas. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, this game, I think you're going to want to pay attention to the <laughs> U.S. So tonight, uh, USC yeah, is they're, playing they're both at Oregon big games. Yeah. Well, Oregon State. Eh. I mean, I know That's their true. record says they're good, but I don't think they're very good. Um, so uh, obviously that's going to play a role in this, but I still think uh, if UCLA beats Oregon State tonight. Um, then maybe you take them to take uh, with with the points in Eugene, uh, depending on what Oregon does. But I, I I think at what was it? What what did we say that line was seven and a half? Um, S- seven and a half. But UCLA has really struggled. I mean, they're sub five hundred. They lost to Northridge. Everyone knows Northridge is a beast, but that's embarrassing. If you're if you just being in LA, you don't head up to the one eighteen. Like there's a lot of people in LA that went to CSUN. But the idea that UCLA basketball would lose to them, very embarrassing. Yeah, I'll lay it with Oregon. I, I UCLA's gotta prove it to me. They gotta prove it to me. Oregon, yeah. I know they're always injured and Folly Dante gets injured having fucking Captain Crunch, I feel like. But uh, you know, they they're just they're a more proven team. Dana Altman, I think, has got the team playing a little bit ahead of schedule. So uh give me the ducks minus the points there. I, I like how the Pac twelve cuts down on these travel costs by having these uh two for weekends for these teams. Like Oregon and Oregon State are in town to take on UCLA and USC. They share uh, the same spirit airlines. Uh, it's genius. It's that's how you you save money. Um o- Oregon got completely destroyed by Syracuse recently. Uh but yeah, you gotta lay the points, unfortunately. That court is something, yeah, no, is I'm something going, else. I'm, I'm all in on Oregon. I like UCLA as a program, but it's a big number for Oregon. They're just not there yet. Big number. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get there later on. Like uh, they have a bunch of talent, but you know, UCLA future might be kind of interesting uh, right now. But uh, yeah, not taking them in this game. If I was uh, if I was a betting man, I might. Um, and I was listening to the live stream. I might I might do a double. Just take the home team in both of these games. Do a little little fade o- Oregon or fade uh, Oregon State, since the LA teams are in town. Oh, and they play one on Thursday night before uh, when most people will be listening to this. Kansas heads to Kansas C- City, which this is a great a great trivia question to stump your buddies. 
you ask them uh, to list off all the states that have multiple NFL teams. And one of the states that no one ever gets correct is Missouri, St. Louis, and the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas crosses the border. To t- this is a neutral site game. Uh, yes. Wichita State. Um, but I guess they both cross the border. This is they're invading Missouri to take to to battle this uh, game. Uh, remember when Wichita State went on their first deep run in the in, in March Madness, and we all got to learn what a shocker was. Imagine <laughs> if that happened today; it would break the internet. If the entire world was introduced to a shocker, and then <laughs> then you'd have serious people saying, "Yo, actually, it's a, it's a shock of wheat." It's like go fuck yourself. Kansas laying nine and a half. Surprised they haven't changed their name because it's offensive. <laughs> uh, Bill Self and the and the boys uh, have a team this year. Colby, uh, you know Wichita State is I think ahead of schedule. You know they went out and hired uh, Paul Mills from from uh, Oral Roberts with Max Aismas and company as their head coach. Um, but I'm with you. Like I don't think they're there yet. Uh, this is, I will say it's a rivalry game, little brother factor. They haven't played in like eight years. And even with that, Wichita did fuck up Kansas when they did play. But I just think, I just think, you know, it's a Wichita just not there yet. It's year one of, of the mills era. So I will lay the points with Kansas. Yeah. I mean, if you're fading Kansas in the regular season, you got to have a good reason. And I don't, I don't see a good reason as the, why you would fade them here. I mean, they went into Indiana, beat Indiana. They went, um, they're rusty. That's why. Yeah. It's a neutral site game coming off. Like they haven't played since Friday, they beat Tennessee 22nd. by nine on a neutral, but this team, Kentucky, but this team's not fucking about. Yeah. I think they're, I mean, I think they're pretty laser focused. Have they played with their food at all this year? Other than the the game, they got, uh, kind they of got, against Yale. I get, I mean, they ended up winning by fifteen, but that was like <laughs> Yale was up late. Yale covered played, by a half a point. Yeah, they played with their food and they still won by fifteen. Yeah. So I, yeah, I guess that helps the case for Kansas. <laughs> yeah, k- take Kansas. We'll be talking about fading uh, Bill Self later. And uh, shout out to Ken Palm, new feature on the site. Uh, they have the. Did you know Kansas has the ninth longest active win streak at seven? Hmm. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, do you know who Thank number you, Ken, Pom. does Colby know who has the longest win streak in the country? This will this is a great trivia question for the uh, scuba diver. You it's you have three probably ch- a team that didn't make the NCAA tournament last year. Oh, you're mm. maybe you're right. Uh, there you have three. Uh, this might be regular season. You have three options. Uh, James Madison is one of them. I think Mississippi that would be the one, is another, right? and Houston. I think it would be JMU. No, those three are the three. They oh, all have 12, oh. 12 game winning streaks. Um, yeah. The the more you know. That was that was me attempting to educate everyone. Moving on. <laughs> UNC Wilmington. We are not an education show. Heads to Fayetteville, Arkansas to take on Arkansas. Arkansas laying seven. Woo Sue, Sue Pig, Suey, whatever. Sean, make, Woo make, pig. <laughs> make the Arkansas fans mad with your uh, your hog call. Woo pig. Suey. 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 Colby. Um, how's Colby's how's, just looking at me stone faced via the, Zoom. How's the must bus? Pig, Suey. I, are, you the, have the to say it. Pig. This is what you have to do. You have to say it and, and with the the idea that I want to get the must bus shirtless. Woo pig. <laughs> Suey. Suey. <laughs> Know, that, was the the that was the best one. That was the best one. I'm not from fucking um, Arkansas. Yeah. Cues. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, look, this is a great spot. This is a great spot for Wilmington. Wilmington went to Kentucky and won. I was on that money line play. And, uh, and I think, I think just uh, muscleman in November and December, especially against these mid majors. Remember he takes like 10 transfers every year. So it's like, you're figuring things out. It is close to conference play, so that's a little scary because they normally get their shit together by conference play. But I think Wilmington's too good of a team. Give me the Seahawks to cover. And sprinkle a little bit on that money line. They can play. Mm. Mm. I hate when you do this. You know, you know I like. So all right, let's handicap the handicapper. Colby loves a good small small market yep. program. He also loves teams from North Carolina. Yeah. He also but- loves the beach by Wilmington. I yes. also hate teams from North Carolina. Oh wow! Okay. 
Well, and and that, that's unfair. You hate a lot of things. Seahawks have done well on the road. I mean, that win uh, in Kentucky, um, that's a quality win. Then even it, even UNC Asheville, uh, you know, kind of a rivalry game there. Oh, I love uh, I love Arkansas. You I, love Arkansas. I, I love Arkansas at home here. Mm. Uh, I, I I'm I, with Colby. I'm actually going to be on UNC Wilmington. I, I love that people can point to uh, UNC Wilmington with a road win in Kentucky and act like it's a similar situation. It's not. They will not be shocked. They will not be surprised by this team. Mm. That's the kind of thing that's perfect for a coach like the Must Bus. He puts it up on each seat, bulletin board material. <laughs> you, we don't want to be Kentucky. I mean, Arkansas do we? did lose the UNC Greensboro. Yeah, yeah. Another reason why they won't get caught by another UNC squad. No, these, these minor or maybe UN- the UNC entire school system <laughs> has their number. Yeah, why are we playing and, and, all these teams from North yeah. Carolina, Arkansas? You got Furman on the scale. Oh, there's that's South Carolina. They you did got Duke, and, and North look, Carolina. They, they didn't cover a lot of those games against Gardner Webb, North Carolina school. They didn't cover. Uh, they didn't cover against o- ODU. Uh, yeah, I know damn. that's Southern Virginia, but that's close to the border. Uh, so and Abil- even in that most recent game, Abilene Christian there. I know it's a Texas school, but they didn't cover against a good mid-major there. Supposed to be a tune-up game before the SEC schedule starts. This could be a catastrophe. Lay the points. Handicap and the handicapper. West Virginia, last game on the slate, Saturday, 4 p.m. on the West Coast. We're heading to Cleveland, Ohio. Another neutral site game. Colby, what is going on with college basketball? They're stealing yeah. home home sites from us. Uh Big 12 takes on the Big Ten as West Virginia and Ohio State face off. Ohio State laying 10. I mean, gut reaction is that that uh, it's a big number, but West Virginia's not very good. I gotta take the points. It's too much though. Ohio State, I know they're ten and two, but when you dive into, you know, their season, it's like, okay, who have they played that's good? Uh Alabama, which they won. Um A and M got them in Columbus by seven. I just think even that Minnesota game, Minnesota, they only beat Minnesota by ten. Uh so I, I think dub V, now that they got those those passes, you know, essentially the transfer portal. Uh, being open again, so Raekwon Battle and a few other guys were able to play this year. I think uh, that that's all the reason for me to take the ten. Ohio State's probably well, still mean, going to win the game, but yeah. Yeah, West Virginia has some bad losses though. The True. Horse of Rad- Radford, the horse of Radford UMass, came, came to their doorstep. But I also think like Mammoth, even like they e- fucking lost to Mammoth, Colby. <laughs> Even looking at the analytics doesn't do you a solid in this in this matchup because you got to look at the players that weren't available. I'm talking about Ra- Raquan Battle coming over from Montana State, uh, Noah Farrakhan from Eastern Michigan, and Kerr Krishna from Arizona. They got all three of those. Those are huge gets then to be able to 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 play. So uh, I think we how take Doug V. How many games have they played together? One. And there was the Toledo game. Yeah, I believe actually I think Battle might have played. He had the flu. He might have played the Ra- the Radford game too. I think I think he played the Ra- actually so I think it's two games they've played. I think the first game was Radford, the second game was Toledo. Ah, first game, um I could see getting tripped up by the horse. Second game Toledo looked better. I'm with Colby. The waiver, uh, the waivers have been released. Yeah, I'll, t- I'll take West Virginia plus ten. But again, that Mammoth loss just jumps out on their resume. And did you see Colby? It also includes NF, uh, college players looking to transfer again. Yeah, so, everything's open. So and, and, and game on, baby. No need for a waiver to transfer next year. Or well, right and, now. and and Raekwon Battle, uh, as Trevor mentions in the chat, dropped thirty-two points against Radford. He's a difference maker. They still lost. Need, needed more fluids. Can't be dehydrated against Radford. All right, we got to the end. You have to know when to call. Who uh, who goes first in this se- section? Should the, Kramer? You do. Should the best handicapper lock. go first? Well, how do you how do you consider best handicapper? All the games. Okay, your overall percentage. You are the current leader at sixty percent. Colby fifty five. I'm nipping at your heels at fifty four percent. But if we go locks. Okay. I would be the leader at seventy nine percent. I haven't. Uh, I have been horrible with dogs though. Only. Only. Yeah. So some uh, would say uh, that the puny seventeen percent. The lock percentage <laughs> often um, just regresses towards the overall percentage. So, uh, lot. I'm. I'm probably at a more stable place than you are right now. You're more <laughs> volatile in your stable in your genius, pick, Ryan Cram. In, in your pick uh, percentages. All right. Lock number one. 
I'm going to take you to Friday night. I think Gonzaga is fraudulent. Give Ooh. me San Diego State. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we're going to be Rare on that one. Rare dog lock, Ryan. We're going to be on that one uh, live in Vegas. Paper ticket. Lock number two. We're going to go to Saturday. And there, there's a couple of these nice big favorites that it's like, ooh, I should do this. But too many points for Creighton to be getting against Marquette plus four and a half. Hmm. See this? Two dogs. Double in a row. dog. And dog. for my dog dog. Now, what are you going to do? It has to be Cal. What do you mean? It has to be Cal. Indiana State can score with anyone in the country. And I don't think this Michigan State team is on the level of Alabama. So I like this spot for them. Give me the money line, dog. Mm. Uh, they're selling jerseys. Michigan State might be distracted, shaking some hands, kissing some babies. I do regret a little bit not getting. Uh, there's a couple other nice spots here on the in the lock category, but yeah, Indiana State money line. What's that money line going to be, Colby? Like four fifty? I would imagine somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, somewhere Ooh, in that ballpark. Four twenty. Yeah. Ooh, it's smoking my weed. Uh, for me, jumping right at it, you uh, Utah at home against Wazoo. This is a good spot Ooh. for the Utes. A little elevation Utes. game, fading Wazoo, consensus play, everything I like to get down on. Uh, next up, other lock. Um, yeah, I like. Hmm. You're not gonna take so. You're just gonna pretend like you're not gonna lock. Give me sec. Syracuse minus yeah. one at home. You're wearing a fucking Cuse jersey. Yeah, I can't wear the buddy. I can't debut the buddy Bayheim without locking up Syracuse. Give the fans what they want. Oh man, I think. Um, I feel like I need a hat to match you guys. I just realized you're both rocking the TCE hat. Yeah, the TCE uh, black and white hat in the uh, uh, store it's over at the fire. SGPN store. Pretty, pretty fire. Uh, we got some new shirts too. We have uh, the War on Corporate Gambling T-shirt just debuted. That thing's pretty awesome. Pick Dundee uh, T-shirts. Pick I Dundee. Mean, your got chances of getting ass go up instantly. <laughs> it's skyrocket. Yeah. Uh, Bet Detective shirts in in the mm. shop as well. A uh, lot more coming. Uh, so uh, make sure you check them out. I like a lot of these. I think some of these bigger dogs are kind of interesting. Uh, man. Do I go West Virginia? Do I go Iowa, Indiana State? Do Cal. I Cal? Cal. Cal's fun. Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna go Washington on the money line. I think they are alive. Oh no, it's in. Col- I can't I can't do it in elevation. Give me West Virginia on the money line. I like Colby's angle about getting all the players back. Um, I think they might catch Ohio State sleeping here a little bit. Analytics are failing you. Never forget. Colby, what do you got? Uh, let's lock up. I think you're right, John. Utah minus six and a half. Uh, the bonus lock. Let's go to. I mean, I'll take Cal plus seventeen and a half. It's too much. It's too much. Uh, the dog is going to be. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Give me Michael Crichton mm, to win outright in Milwaukee. It's a good money line play as well. Do we want to Iowa State, West Virginia, Creighton money line round robin? You say Iowa State? Indiana Sorry, State. Indiana State. Oh, okay. Uh, I like that. I like that. Right. Colby was disgusted by. It. We're gonna get a three star review. Oh come It's on. gonna be Bill Snyder all over again. <laughs> Who remembers Bill Snyder? Hey, make sure you smash that subscribe smash. button. Toss us a positive rating review. It is the holiday season, so feeling generous with some SGP and gift cards. Make sure sure to tune in to our rocking New Year's afternoon eve uh spectacular party. Gonna be a lot of fun. All your SGP and favorites. Uh Kramer and I having some cocktails, watching some NFL, some live sweats, some pick'em, some drafts. We got it all coming uh Sunday afternoon, 12 30 Pacific, youtube.com slash sports game podcast. Smash for subscribers only. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page and subscribe to the college experience. Colby's going to be hopping on here. Mr. CJ Sullivan, uh, not uh, pretty soon here. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. He's Ryan. I have like 138 more drafts to do to max center the playoff best ball. So pray for me. Kramer, let it ride.